the question is identify the lesion let me enlarge the image i'm sorry that the image that is given in the question over here isn't very clear but what you would be able to appreciate is if you can see on the right hand side of the mandible there is a radiolucent lesion that is appearing to be as a swelling and it has caused resorption of the root of the mesial as well as the distal roots of the mandibular first molar okay and it has caused displacement of the mandibular second premolar so if you can notice this image i am sorry i can't uh, maximize it more or enlarge it more but if you can actually look at the image it has a distinct outline and this is how it looks and there is no haziness or there is no uh, radio opacity within the radiolucent lesion so this is basically a unicystic lesion and not a multicystic lesion because when you have a multicystic lesion how will it appear on the radiograph you will have a sorry unilocular lesion not a unicystic a unilocular lesion when you have a multilocular lesion how will it appear you will have radio opaque lamina dura or very faint radio opacity which would be present within the radiolucency i tried getting this image for you so this is how the image is over here if you can see it very distinctly there is a radio opac radio lucency and within that radio lucency if you can notice there is nothing or there is no haziness or radio opacity which is present that means this lesion is basically a unilocular lesion coming to the question over here amongst the options given dentigerous cyst you squamous cell carcinoma unicystic ameloblastoma aot so dentigerous cyst is more often than not a unilocular lesion but it can also have multilocularity when it starts showing multilocularity you need to remember that it is going to get converted into an ameloblastoma however one of the most important features of a dentigerous cyst is it is associated with an impacted tooth now in this image you can very clearly see that there is no impaction present and due to this absence of impaction the tooth is going it is not a dentigerous cyst so you can omit it coming to squamous carcinoma a squamous cell carcinoma what if it involves the alveolar bone if you open your bucket and you read it it is very clearly written and rather even your white and farrow it is very clearly written that your margins are very indistinct in a squamous cell carcinoma it is not easy to find distinct margins in squamous cell carcinoma so what does this mean due to these indistinct borders you are not going to be able to identify the periphery of the lesion over here you can notice very clearly in this image that there is a very clear radio lucent sorry radio opaque border that is present around the radio lucency so that means this lesion cannot be a squamous cell carcinoma because the borders are indistinct in scc so scc is also out now coming to the option between unicystic ameloblastoma and aot see unicystic ameloblastoma is a single cystic lesion it is one of the types of ameloblastoma it is a single cyst you will not have multiple cystic formations in addition to that it will not have multiple follicles it will be a single follicle that will be present in unicystic ameloblastoma one more thing that you will notice is it can be a unilocular it is most of the times a unilocular lesion however there have been reports very very few and very rare reports of a multilocularity present but it is not compulsory that you will have a multilocularity in unicystic ameloblastoma so one more option thing that you need to remember is a unicystic ameloblastoma occurs more commonly in the mandibular molar region posterior region uh, involving the ramus as well as the angle and the body most often it is in the mandibular molar region so this image over here directs more towards a unicystic ameloblastoma than an aot now why is aot not the answer is because i mean at adenomatoid odontogenic tumor aot is commonly found in patients who who have uh, some swelling in the maxillary anterior region that is a classical feature of aot it is present in the maxillary anterior region very rarely will it be present in the mandibular posterior region as compared to all other odontogenic tumors 
that is the reason why it cannot be aot because the classical aot would appear in the maxillary anterior region and that is how you eliminate aot from the answer over here thereby leading to the right answer being unicystic amyloblastoma okay